Hello, alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan Sir, and welcome to the Pick Six, the podcast by the Attractions Group, where we bring you the latest stories from the attractions and amusement industry. Well, before we dive into this week's Pick Six, let me remind our listeners where they can tune in to the Attractions Group podcast. You can catch us on your favorite podcast apps. We're talking about like Apple, Spotify, Google, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like, share, and let your fellow enthusiasts know how to find us. Ryan, what's story number one? Story number one, we're going to start off with a really obscure one that nobody's talking about. Uh, Top Thrill 2, <laughs> uh, that was sarcasm, people. Uh, so Cedar Point announced Friday on social media that Top Thrill 2 will not reopen for the 2024 season. The Sandusky, Ohio amusement park said that the roller coasters manufacturer, Zamperla, will not be able to complete the modifications needed to reopen in 2024. One of the most anticipated rides for this year only operated for eight days before closing on May 12th. Uh, once we got past about the 4th of July, I kind of saw this coming, to be honest with you. Yeah, I did too. And I wrote an article last week, a few days before they announced that, uh, you, you know, you saw a lot of the enthusiasts and the, the Cedar Point fans, you know, hope had kind of been abandoned that it was going to open up again this year. So it was good to see that there's some clarity to it. Uh, you know, I, I understand all the disappointment that a lot of, uh, you know, thrill seekers, coaster enthusiasts, you know, have had this year with it not running or, you know, they went there hoping to have it running and it wasn't. Uh, but this is a prototype ride. You know, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate it happened, but uh, this gives them plenty of time, you know, to, to resolve the issues. You know, you got several months here before the park opens up again in May. Of, of 2025 but uh, to just get it right and those eight days that it was open i mean we saw nothing but rave reviews nothing but rave reviews about this yeah if people and if people were surprised by elements that they didn't think would matter like the backward launch so that's definitely um you know we can only speculate as to what the extent of the problems are uh, obviously they singled out the lightning trains from zamperla and zamperla has done a lot to to modify those, but you know, the things you can see from the visual eye, but uh, we, there was also lots of photo and video that went around of people inspecting track with black lights. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, I assume that as, that's checking for fractures and stuff, which could just be like routine, like they would be doing that now anyway, or it could be indicative of a bigger problem. So uh, a lot to be seen. So. I, I actually reached out to our friend Ryan, the ride mechanic, and I was like, you know, there's a lot more on Top Thrill too. We'd like to hear your opinion on, but he hasn't, <laughs> but he hasn't done a, um, he hasn't done another episode on it yet. But no, we'll get on. him back on the show soon. But uh, yeah, moving on, a new haunted maze is coming to Not Scary Farm. Uh, it mashes up two very different fears into a nightmare scenario, combining web spinning spiders and dying women living out their final days in a decaying nursing home. Not Scary Farm 2024. It's going to feature 10 haunted mazes, five scare zones, and four live shows on select nights beginning September 19th all the way to November 2nd at the Southern California theme park. And when you talk about Not Scary Farm, this is the granddaddy of all the Halloween events. Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people, and granted, this is West Coast people, so they're comparing it to Hollywood, but a lot of people have said, like, it's kind of either or as far as what's better this or halloween horror nights um what what's really weird is this is obviously under the same umbrella as let's go with let's go with cedar fair rather than six flags as a whole and you know we just did an episode on how king's island's event is so stale but knott's berry farm scary farm event is always being reinvented and always new and it just shows you the level of talent that they have out of that park you know? Oh yeah, and a lot of the the scare actors that they have, I mean, they're professional people. You know, we're talking, uh, you know, it's not the the high school and you know the college age kids for the most part. I mean, you've got a lot of people that they have these professional jobs, but they love the Halloween season, and you know they come back year after year to do this event. Yep. Next up, Carowinds is set to light up the night with its summer blast fireworks show on Saturday, August thirty first at nine thirty p.m., capping off the Labor Day weekend with a stunning display. The 17-minute spectacle will be synchronized to a musical score featuring artists from this star-studded Carowinds Summer Music Fest, amplified by Coke Studio. 
The show will be will dazzle with a variety of shells and effects in different colors and shapes, including five shell sizes ranging from two and a half to five inches, offering a high flying multi century experience. Over 700 shells will be launched from 102 racks positioned behind Hurler, Carowind's iconic wooden coaster. The Summer Blast fireworks show promises a memorable finale to the summer as guests reflect on moment, uh, moments from the Carowind Summer Music Festival at the nation's only music park that spans two states. While the fireworks can be enjoyed throughout the park's 400 acres, recommended viewing spots include Carolina Boardwalk, County Fair, and Celebration Plaza. Now, <laughs> do you want my analysis as a I guess I'll call myself a former pyrotechnician assistant because yes, I, I, I can decode with this as so. Uh, five inches is the biggest shell that they have at Kings Island for their nightly show, too. So that's not a particularly big shell. Um, two and a half is really small. That's like, you know, like when your sports team hits a home run. And I mean, for us, it's the Reds and they have those fireworks that are outside. Those are two and a half inches. So it's just real pops. Uh, 700 shots is actually a pretty relatively decent show. I, I don't know why it's talking about the racks uh, because uh, the number of racks is dependent on the um, the size of the shells because obviously, you know, there's less tubes in a five inch rack than there is in a two and a half inch rack, but still a fun fact. But I do like the idea of using this uh, summer celebration stuff, the, the, the summer fest because they were able to pull that off and it seems like they were able to have a successful event. And uh, I'm glad that they were able to look back and celebrate it with this. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, you mentioned the things they did this summer, you know, a number of people that that's their home park, you know, and they feel that it's been one of the best years that they've ever, ever experienced and enjoyed at Carowinds. So it's, it's great to see, you know, this is what they're going to do to, to wrap up the summer season and uh, then they got the Halloween event coming up, uh, Scarowinds. They do a fantastic job with that. So, you know, if you get an opportunity over the next few weeks, you know, get out the Carowinds. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yeah. Next up. Well, the first ride ever that I ever experienced at Busch Gardens, Tampa, is about to take its final bow. After more than 44 years of delivering thrills, Scorpion. One of the park's iconic roller coasters that's going to be retired on Labor Day. Bush Gardens Tampa Bay recently announced the closure on its social media channels. Uh, they're inviting fans to take one last ride before the coaster's final run. Uh, Scorpion, a beloved fixture of Bush Gardens since its debut in 1980, is one of only three remaining roller coasters of its kind in the world, soon to only be two. Manufactured by Anton Schwarzkopf and designed by Werner Stengel, this Silver Arrow model has left an indelible mark on coaster enthusiasts with its tight 360 degree loop and dizzying speeds up to 41 miles per hour. The ride's compact yet intense layout has made it a fan favorite for decades, offering a bite-sized thrill that's packed with punch. You know, you always hate to see rides retired, especially with those that have had such a, a long, long run, you know, 44 years for a steel coaster is a very long time. Uh, but for me, uh, you know, the memory is it's the first ride I ever rode at Busch Gardens Tampa. See, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, I went to Busch Gardens Tampa last year, and I had forgotten that this ride existed. Uh, now, I do remember the ride being a pleasurable ride. Like, it was fun. Uh, because you see something like this, and you assume it's going to be jerky or uncomfortable or whatever. And I don't remember it being that way. But uh, I'm sure this ride meant a lot to a lot of people. So it's uh, it's always very touchy when a ride's being removed because when we talked about this it's somebody's favorite ride it's somebody's last ride that they rode with their dad before he died or it's something like that so uh handle it with grace uh 1980 to now is a great run like you mentioned uh but they already did mention in the announcement that they're making way for something new so hopefully it's something exciting that's going yeah future the park expansion there but uh yeah for me like i it would be one of those if i went there today for my first time ever bush gardens it would not be the first ride i'd go to i mean there's just so many other things there now that that grabs your attention and this you know kind of flies under the radar but back in 1996 when i visited for the first time you know it was the first ride that i that i went to and there weren't as many coasters there at that time and uh it was like i said it was tight it was intense um fun thrilling at the same time um 
memorable. So uh, yeah, for me, it's always going to have uh, you know that spot in my heart because it was the first ride that I rode at that park. I think mine was Guazi, believe it or not. You know. All right. Uh, enough about me. Um, so uh, Cedar Point is bringing back its beloved Happy Friars Fresh Cut Fries Fest, running from September 6th to the 8th. Since 1942, Cedar Point's original fresh cut fries have been a must have for visitors around the Midwest. And this year's event will feature four all new recipes for guests to enjoy. At Happy Friar, located near Gemini, guests will indulge in the five alarm fresh cut fries topped with spicy chili, ghost pepper cheese, and habanero pepper. Or try the pierogi fresh cut fries loaded with mini pierogi, sauerkraut, and Thousand Island dressing. Over at Hot Potato near Raptor, the menu will include Nashville hot fresh cut fries featuring grilled Nashville hot chicken, cheese sauce, and pickles, as well as chicken parmesan fresh cut fries. That's where I would be, the chicken parmesan, with grilled chicken, tomato sauce, mozzarella, and parmesan cheese. Uh, these four limited time flavors will join classic favorites like buffalo, garlic parmesan, original chili and cheese fresh cut fries throughout the weekend, a happy fryer fest, the Lovable Fry mascot of the Gemini Midway will make appearances for selfies and family photos, inviting everyone to sample Cedar Point's delicious, famous, but well, delicious, not necessarily famous because they're new, limited time offerings. Uh, I do like their fresh cut fries there. I really do. They have really good ones. You know, if you're if you were to make a top five list of fresh cut fries in the industry, Cedar Point makes that list. You know, you mentioned the one that, uh, you know, you'd be about, I think the Nashville hot fresh cut fries, uh, that would be the one I think I would opt for, but I would try the one that you like too with the chicken farmers on ones. So in a lab setting, I would probably go for the Nashville hot, but all I'm thinking of is, do I really want to eat something hot after walking around Cedar Point when it's 150 degrees out? You know, it kind of magically uh, cools down right after Labor Day. So this is yeah. uh, September. Well, 16, it is saying I don't, so what I, you're yeah, saying I don't think it's going to be, gonna be a, you know, 100 degrees for you. But no, I mean, this is always, uh, you know, I think this looks like a fantastic event. It's one of those, uh, you know, because it's got such a short run. You know, September 6th to the 8th, you know, you have to mark your calendars. There's um, that urgency to get there for it. So it's not spread out. So, you know, I, I like what they're doing there and it, it looks delicious. Cool. Next up. Great Escape was recently rated as the top value among the Six Flags properties in North America by the software firm QR Code Generator Pro SL. The firm did a data analysis of ticket prices, operating hours, number of attractions, the cost of food and parking, the crowd sizes, and wait times of rides, and assigned a score out of 100 points to each of the parks. The Great Escape uh, was ranked at number one with 63.23 points. La Ronde, a Six Flags amusement park in Montreal, was ranked second with 60.69 points. Third place was Six Flags over Georgia with 59.32 points. Six Flags, as we know, owns many amusement parks now around the U.S. and Canada, including Darien Lake uh, in western New York, uh, Knott's Berry Farm, Southern California. you got Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey, uh, Cedar Point in Kings Island, Ohio. So uh, this, is a, this is a really good honor for Six, uh, for Six Flags Great Escape to, to win this award. I was there earlier this summer. I had a great time. Uh, very efficient with their operations. Uh, so yeah, I can see why why they they grabbed this honor. Very cool. Yeah. Um, as we're reading this, I'm like, so a QR code generator is approving of Six Flags. Go you. But yeah, it, it's it is very interesting to break it down. Um, some of it, like sentiment, obviously doesn't take into account because from what I understand, La Ronde is one of the parks that needs a lot of work. So that being ranked number two is rather interesting. But um, uh, it, it'd be interesting to know more about their algorithm. Uh, but, you know, Great Escape, you always talk about it being a hidden gem and stuff. Here's some it is. good evidence of that, you know? Yeah, it is. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the listener questions. First listener question, George P. from Chattanooga, Tennessee. said, the tor Tennessee tornado doesn't get enough love. I think it's the best roller coaster at Dollywood. Where does it rank in your list of roller coasters at Dollywood? I enjoy it. Uh, I think it's a fun ride. It's not my you know, favorite there. It wouldn't be number one on my list, but 
you know, it's a ride that when I'm at Dollywood, I certainly want to get at least one ride on it. You know, what about you, Ryan? I rank it third. I had time to think about that while you were talking. Uh, my fa favorite ride there is Mystery Mine. But no, now they got Big Bear Mountain in the mix. Okay, let's act like yeah. Big Bear doesn't exist. I don't want to mess up the formula. Uh, Mystery Mine and then Lightning Rod and then that one. Uh, the thing I like about it is um, it's an aero coaster, but it's not your quintessential headbanging kind of situation. Kind of like Loch Ness Monster. Uh, where it's really fun to ride and really good sensations. And it's you can tell that the ride operates exactly like it's supposed to, you know, not right. too rough or jerky or anything like that. No, I mean, it's it's fun. Um, like for me, I got Thunderhead. Um, I will put Big Bear Mountain on my list. Uh, you got Lightning Rod. Uh, those are going to be, you know, ahead of it for me. Thunderhead is temperamental being a wooden coaster. There are some times when I ride that and I'm like, that's better than the voyage. And there are other times when I ride that and like, I'm never riding that again. You know, uh, recently it's been really good. Uh, I'm when, you know, it, it went through a rough spout for a while back in, you know, six, seven years ago, but I think they've retracked the entire thing since then. And the most underrated coaster for me there is, is blazing fury. Oh, I love that. I don't think of that as a coaster though. I think that is no, a no, but they classify it. I mean, it's on their list as a coaster, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think love that's that fair. ride. Um, I think Wild Eagle, you know, we're talking about wing coasters. I, I, I enjoy that. You know, it's a beautiful setting that they have there in the mountains with that. Um, you mentioned Mystery Mind. I'm mine. I mean, you, you, how can you not, you know, go to Dollywood and not, not ride that? I mean, that's a fantastic ride. Um, it's got Lightning a lot rod. of haters. <clears throat> yeah, Lightning Rod. Oh, yeah. you know, what can you say? I've ridden a lot this year and, and, you know, every time I ride it, you know, it just becomes another ride that I just, you know, like more and more every time. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they got a lot of great coasters there at Dollywood. You can't go wrong with any of them. Yeah. Uh, next listener question. Phyllis W. from Bridgeport, Connecticut. What are your thoughts on Rye Playland and Rye, New York? <laughs> I'm going to defer this to you. I've never been. <laughs> well, I mean, it's been a long time uh, since I've been there. Uh, in fact, it'll be. 40 years, you know, the summer I was there in 1984, um, so, you know, small traditional park, you know, I, re I remember, you know, uh, for me, it was, you know, the type of, you know, food you would expect to have at the traditional parks, you know, like the old Cincinnati Coney Island days, uh, you know, there was the, the, you know, obviously the cotton candy was really good. Uh, the carousel, you know, I enjoyed that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun park. It's not something, you know, again, it's been 40 years since I've been there. So it's it's not something that, you know, it was on my bucket list to, to do every single year. But I, I would like to get back there. I thought about it when I was in New York this summer, mm -hmm. uh, but didn't have enough days. You know, I was only there for four or five days in New York. Uh, but if I had more time, I certainly would have tried to find a way to do it. Uh, I love those uh, small, you know, parks like that. It's, I think it was uh, 1928, I'm thinking, when it opened. So it's almost a hundred years old. It was one of the parks that I worried about during the pandemic. You know, mm -hmm. you wondered how many parks were going to make it through. Uh, so it was on my mind in uh, 2000 and 2021 or 2000 or 2020 and 2021. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a fun park. Uh, I hope to get back there again. Cool. Yeah. I, I hope to make it out there someday. All right. Uh, Make sure you follow us on any of your favorite podcast apps, Apple, Google, Spotify. We're now available on YouTube Music, apparently. That's uh, big. Hit that subscribe. I, YouTube, it, it is huge. And it's like a big, uh, <laughs> it's a big downside that we weren't available in the first place. A big oversight by me. Um, uh, make sure you hit subscribe button on visual YouTube and uh, hit that like button and follow us on X at attractions underscore GRP. Uh, no episode next week. We forgot to mention that in the AGP. No episode next week because I'll be out of town, but we'll be back in two weeks with another exciting episode of the Attractions Group podcast.